Although a lot of Polaroid film types are available today through Polaroid Originals, there are some that are not. And today we're going to be shooting this cool Polaroid camera, even though the film is no longer available. I bumped into this cool camera at a flea market. It not only had a cool look, it also had something I had never seen in a camera before. A power cord. It only works plugged into the wall. It also didn't have a viewfinder, which intrigued me. And so being the shrewd negotiator that I am, I was able to pick this camera up, untested and unaware of anything Polaroid for $15. The camera is a Laminex Micro 400. It has four lenses, a built-in flash, adjustable aperture, and a bunch of settings in the back that I have no idea what they do. There is very little information available about it, and I haven't been able to track down a manual. It's obviously designed to take passport photos, and some online sources speculate that this camera, or cameras very similar to it, were used in prisons to take muck shots. When I plugged the camera into an outlet, the flash fired. I was also able to figure out how you're supposed to frame your image. The camera has essentially a laser beam you point at the subject. The film inside was exposed to light by me, by opening it, and it was hopelessly expired anyways. Like with all my cameras though, I wanted to know if it worked. So this sent me down quite the journey to create a film alternative for this camera and other cameras like this. We have Polaroid film, which is hopelessly expired. We have Fuji film, which is somewhat expired and expensive. And we have one instant, which is just expensive. And Polaroid originals doesn't make anything that fits this type. However, after a lot of digging online, and maybe you knew about this, but I sure didn't. So I genuinely mean a lot of digging. I found some folks who were experimenting using Instax film in their Polaroid cameras. Here's how that works. You go into a dark room or dark bag. You take a single unexposed frame from an Instax pack. You tape that single frame in an empty Polaroid pack or any other pack that fits. You put the pack in your Polaroid camera. Now you're able to take your camera out of the dark room or dark bag and shoot one image. Instax wide rotated sideways works best if you're trying to emulate pack film because of its larger size. The dark area is the emulsion side and always needs to face forward. And be aware that all Instax film is ISO 800, so you will have to adjust your camera settings. Once you've taken that single shot, you go back into the dark room or dark bag. You remove the Polaroid pack from your Polaroid camera. You remove the now exposed Instax frame from the Polaroid pack. And then you put that frame back into an Instax pack. You load that Instax pack into an Instax camera. And now you're able to take that camera out of the dark room or dark bag. You cover the lens completely and take a picture with the Instax camera. It will use its rolls and internal mechanisms to very precisely break the chemical pack and spread the chemicals and develop the film for you. This method works. There's some good and some bad news. The good news is that it's cheap. I was able to buy a 20 pack of Instax wide for $16 on Amazon. So it's more than 10 times cheaper than one instant or FP100C. And the quality is also pretty good. The bad news is that you can't take multiple shots and it is a ton of work and fiddling just to get that one shot. I have a dark bag, but it was too small to fit both cameras. So I had to resort to blacking out my bathroom. Also, the image area is still a bit smaller than the original pack film. So your images are slightly cut off. After a bit more digging, I found this 2016 article by someone called Sheep of Doom. He created a 3D model for the Type 100 pack that makes the process a lot less fiddly. Instead of having to tape the frame, it simply fits neatly into the base and is held in place by a back which is supported by the springs of the camera. Although it's a big step forward, I still feel like I can do better. So I created my own design based on Sheep of Doom's design. 
I made the back plate cover the whole area without crushing the film pack. I changed the base design to allow for a dark slide to be inserted. And then I created a 3D printable dark slide. I gave the new design a try and it worked like a charm. It allows me to use my dark bag to load as many packs as I want. Then I use a rubber band to keep the packs together and handle them with care as I work with them. I load them into my camera and remove the dark slide. After taking a picture, I reinsert the dark slide and swap to another pack. When I run out of packs, I put the frames into the Instax camera and develop them all. Printing a little set like this only costs a few bucks in materials. So if you have a 3D printer or have access to one through work or a friend, you can print a bunch of these. There's also some 3D printing services available, although these are usually pretty expensive. I was able to pick up a used Instax wide camera for just $25 with a missing battery cover, but working film still loaded. I'm confident you can probably get them even cheaper if you look around locally. I think this is a great way to bring new life to cameras and film backs that use this format with a solution that's easy and affordable. I've open sourced my design so anyone can print their own or improve it even more. So coming back to the question that started it all, does my Laminex Micro 400 prison mugshot Polaroid camera work? It does. It works beautifully. The smaller image area is very noticeable on this camera, much more than it would be on any other pack film camera. But I'm too excited about the journey this camera led me on to have that bother me. Amazing cameras, just like this one, are all around us waiting to be discovered and used once again. By shooting them, you can become part of their narrative, and you should. Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe if you want to discover more untold and unusual camera stories.